Welcome back to Mastara, everybody, as you've selected Blackmore Tech as the latest topic. The super science Blackmore found in Mastara's distant past, not the grim dark Blackmore found in boring old Greyhawk. Back to the time when uh, Blackmore ruled the world with super science mixing with high fantasy, making it the most advanced society of any D&D setting ever. With everybody mixing magic and technology and spreading across the globe, and everybody was happy. At least until somebody pushed the wrong button and the world blew up. So put on your safety goggles and read your instruction manuals. I'm Mr. Welch, and we are looking at Blackmore Tech. When it comes to talking about Blackmore technology during its golden age, information is pretty sparse. There's three primary sources. Top Ballista, the Hollow World Guide, and of course City of the Gods. The only surviving Blackmore era society that remains at the same technological levels, at least what they know of, is the Black Lore Elves of the Hollow World. Past that, almost no Blackmore technology has survived uh, to the known world intact and is still used for its original purpose. The best source of information that the technology Blackmore possessed before the Great Reign of Fire is the Black Lore Elves, trapped in their social stasis in the Hollow World. The Black Lore Elves are known for their over decadent attitudes and even more so their absolute dependence on their robotic servants and devices. The technology is actually powered by magic now, something the Elves don't realize, but to them their lifestyle is the same as the day before Blackmore exploded. There are a large number of entertainment devices, such as personal transports and cybernetics, that just seem to be the norm rather than just used in emergencies. The elves have the equivalent of robotic golems and terraforming devices. The devices were so superior in design that magic items that the elves actually stopped using magic. They have no memory of it. They have devices that perfectly mimic magic items, but they consider it part of the technology their race so readily adapted. The devices the elves have now are just magical replica of the Blackmore devices, but they're still replicas. The wrist device the elves use for personal defense now casts burning hands or light as magical spells, but the original versions use science to create these effects. The sheer quantity of these devices stand out to anyone who sees them. Every elf has dozens of these magic items, dwarfing even the magic-rich Glantrians. Blackmore technology took care of every need, desire, and want its people could possibly possess. Everything in Blackmore was automated. Food was replicated by machines. Ores and gems were e extracted by machines. New machines were created by old machines. Horses and carts were replaced by flying disks and automated transports. The population that was left was either scientists creating new machines and improving the quality of life, or artists who had nothing better to do than create new drawings and stories. If the Black Lore Elves are any indication of life in Blackmore, the majority of the citizens were decadent from a lack of actual work, kind of like Mega City 1 with Drudge Dread. New societies brought under the Blackmore banner as conquests were pacified with the advanced technologies that overwhelmed them with entertainments and necessities. City of the Gods gave us an actual list of Blackmore technology from the Crashed Beagle. The unifying theme is that items seem to be compact. The armor that comes in the form of lightweight cloth creates a shield that protects as well as plate mail. They have an equivalent of lightsabers that are more force swords than plasma blades, acting as plus four magic swords. Missile weapons tend to be about the size of wands, with only dozens of charges, and more importantly, they can be reloaded. They do have medical devices that cause people to heal at quadruple speed, which would be great, except for Beckme didn't have rules for natural healing. The missile weapons are divided between needlers for single targets and hand blasters for which are area of effect. For tougher targets, they have grenade launchers and heavy blasters. No matter what foe uh, the Blackmorians are facing, they've got a gun for that. One aspect of Blackmore that's found in all the books for reference is that it has a large number of robots. They are ubiquitous in the Black Lore Valley. On the Beagle itself, there was about as many robots as there were crew members. Robots were created specifically for one task, especially the utility robots. Robots were a major part of Blackmore life, and several of them are found in almost every household. Robots perform every aspect of physical labor, serve as military units, and also shape and maintain drastic alterations to the environment Blackmore excelled at. They were largely responsible for the population to either devote themselves to sciences or arts, because those were the only things the robots couldn't do. The greatest inventions of the Blackmore Empire involved machines that created a massive amount of energy, either in the form of engines like the one that powers Serene to the ones that destroyed the Broken Lands and ripped a hole in the fabric of reality in Ethengar. The locations that these were found intact does suggest that the Blackmore Empire had at least outposts across the globe. Their vast number of robots and the need to recharge their devices meant they had to bring their generators or their reactors with them to all the outposts. The reactors without maintenance could become quite unstable, as evidenced by the fact they tended to explode if you poked one with a stick like what the elves discovered and what would become the Broken Lands. This would also explain why there's no outpost left after 4,000 years. The breakdown could have been the cause of the elemental turmoil that reshaped the planet. Serene has the largest piece of surviving Blackmore technology in the form of the giant engine. 
This isn't part of the original Beagle, but an engine from another ship created much later. The engine had a built-in reverse gravity spell ingrained with the technology, and it's a sign of the skill of the Gnomish engineers to actually utilize a Blackmore power supply without turning them into a mushroom cloud. To date, gnomes are the only species to show that they can adapt Blackmore technologies into modern creation. This alone makes them the most successful gnomes in D&D history. While other gnomes are working on learning Phantasmal Engine, the gnomes of Serene have invented the biplane in the strafing run. What Serene does show is the power of a stabilized Blackmore device, which is strong enough to keep a city flying for decades with no sign of weakening. The most game-changing aspect of Blackmore tech was they had hints that they were a spacefaring civilization. It would make sense, considering their entire societal advancement was based on the technology of a crashed starship. The Beagle crew with the Wizards of Blackmore would have been able to move the ship to the center of Blackmore, or start building out from the Beagle itself. The Empire was known for its terraforming, having magical satellites casting control weather on a daily basis would be well within the realm of possibility. How far the Blackmore Empire reaches is a mystery, but if they reach the moon or even the farthest reaches of the Crystal Spheres, that's also unknown. But if you're playing a Spelljammer campaign, finding a hidden cache of Blackmore attack on one of the moons or a lost space station would be the find of a lifetime, at least until you poke it with a stick. Blackmore technology is a bit of a paradox. On one hand, there's only a small handful of books that mention it. On the other hand, what they do mention is enough to extrapolate just how advanced the civilization was. The cover of City of the Gods has been criticized for having nothing to do with the actual module, but it could also be plausible that's how Blackmore looked the day before the Great Reign of Fire. So that wraps up Blackmore technology. Come back next week when you'll pick our next topic, and hopefully this is the week when the book finally comes out. On the good news side, I was given information on proceeding with getting published. Just now have to finish the book. So until next time, remember, nuke them from orbit. It's the only way to be sure.